Thank you very much, uh, Jan. It's a real pleasure for me to be here uh, in Ostend and to see such a, a vibrant marine science community. This is, this is very impressive. Uh, you may not be completely aware about the IOC, so I will start by saying a few words about what we do. The IOC is not the International Olympic Committee, nothing to do with the Olympic Games. We deal with the ocean. So we are an intergovernmental oceanographic commission. We are sitting under uh, UNESCO. We are uh, we have 149 member states and uh, some of uh, the representative of, of Belgium and the Flemish governments that attend the, the, the meetings of the IOC are here today. Uh, we are the voice of ocean science within the UN system. Um, and this, is, uh, this has been the case for the last 60 years. We focus in promoting ocean science, in developing ocean observations, in facilitating the exchange of data amongst nations, and also building capacity uh, all around the world. So today, um, and of course, I also want to highlight that IOC and, and the Flemish marine scientific community has a long history of collaboration. Uh, we've been, uh, some of you may be aware that, for example, here in Ostend, we have the International Ocean Data Exchange uh, Project Office of the IOC, which is basically the data management arm of IOC hosted by the, by the LEAS. And we've had uh, more than probably two decades of uh, very good collaboration with the, with the Flemish community. But today I'm here to speak about uh, the plans for the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development, which will actually start in 2021 until 2030. And uh, to update you, inform you about how we are planning uh, to, to develop this, uh, this decade and, and how you may uh, want to contribute to this because this is not just a UN decade, this is everybody's decade. Uh, it belongs to the marine scientific community, it belongs to citizens, it belongs to policymakers, uh, and, and, and we'll, we'll discuss this maybe uh, in more details. Um, but before we, we, we get to the, to the decade itself, let's set up the, the, the landscape a little bit. Of course, I think we can all uh, reveal in the fact that ocean issues are really raising the last five to ten years on the political agenda. Um, and one of the reasons for that is a number of, of international agreements that are related to the ocean. Of course, we now have the SDGs, and of course, I've seen the, all of you have a, a SDG badge there, and that's, that's very good. And in 2015, nations around the world committed to achieve a number of ocean sustainability targets as they are embedded in the SDG 14. We also have now a very important negotiation in the UN uh, for protecting marine biodiversity in the high seas under the, 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 uh, the Convention on the Law of the Sea. Uh, the climate uh, discussions are now also looking at the ocean and trying to understand how climate and oceans interact and what are the impacts of uh, uh, increased CO2, what kind of mitigation and adaptation strategies are needed for the ocean. Um, we also have the disaster risk reduction community is also has been impacted in many years by ocean uh, hazards, tsunamis, storm surges, uh, cyclones uh, have been very high on, on, on the news. So I think there are a number of political kind of engagement and commitments from member states, and that's that's all very good. Um, we also have a growing awareness amongst uh, citizens and amongst stakeholders. Uh, for the last, for the first time, we had a, a UN Ocean Conference in 2017, and there will be another one uh, next year in Portugal. We have a number of a plethora of uh, international meetings on the ocean. We have every year now the Our Ocean Conference, this time in, in Norway. Uh, in November, the, the Kenya hosted the Blue Economy Conference. We have a World Economic Forum trying to bring the, the private sector and, and, and business operators also focusing on ocean sustainability. The G7, the G20 are, are trying to, to look at how they can uh, promote a better ocean sustainability. So this is, this is pretty good. I think we are in a, in a good spot. But is this really making a change? What is the reality check on the ground? Uh, just if we look at uh, the, a few uh, important parameters which we know are in, impacting the health of our oceans, Carbon emissions are still growing uh, pretty much, uh, you know, at a very high rate, much higher than was, was what was committed at the Paris Agreement. And this, of course, puts us on a course uh, which is well beyond the two degrees of uh, increase uh, by 2100. And that, of course, will have major impact on the ocean. 
ocean acidification is, is one key aspect, but also the degradation of, of very important uh, ecosystem uh, services that the ocean provides to society. At the same time, I think we, we can also say that the ocean, and in particular ocean science, is still pretty much under-invested. Um, this is just a graph that, that shows you um, not so much maybe on ocean science, but more generally how the SDGs are being funded by uh, uh, philanthropic organizations. You can see here that uh, our, our ocean SDG 14 is one of the lowest uh, degree of investment there from, from, from those uh, donor organizations. So clearly this is not, not enough. We also know that you know, in terms of ocean observation, um, we know the ocean is expected to deliver more than three billion uh, US dollars in terms of uh, trillion, sorry, three trillion in terms of uh, benefits uh, globally uh, every year. At the same time, we only have only about one billion uh, which is being invested in ocean observations. And we at IOC are coordinating ocean observations and we invest about 300,000 US dollars per year just to do the coordination. So clearly, there's a problem here. We are not uh, looking at the, in the investments and, and the infrastructure sufficiently. And but of course, this has uh, impacts in, in several regions where there's even uh, hardly any, any observations being uh, undertaken. We also have, um, and that's probably right. That's the one. We also have a, a the issue that not everybody uh, is equal when it comes to uh, capacity to, to undertake science in the, in the ocean. Um, we still have a, a many uh, gaps in terms of capacity development. Uh, this uh, graph uh, comes from the Global Ocean Science Report, which was our, our first uh, attempt uh, in 2017 to come up with a, a, a picture of where countries are investing uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure, in terms of uh, human uh, capacity. Uh, and this provides a, an overview of the productivity in terms of a, a, the science papers which are being produced by the countries. And of course, we see Europe, we see North America, and of course, some part of uh, Southeast Asia, you know, being quite, quite voluminous. But, you know, if you look at Africa, if you look at Latin America, the Caribbean, Pacific seats, small island developing states, we have major gaps here. So this is also something that we need to address uh, if we really want all countries to have the capacity to achieve those sustainable development goals. So it is probably time maybe for a new social contract for natural science. And this is really where we, we start conceptualizing this, this uh, UN decade. We know very much that ocean science remains a voluntary endeavor, uh, while at the same time we have a number of legally binding treaties that requires this science and, and has to be embedded in those, uh, in those, uh, in those uh, pieces of legislation in a more systematic way. So we know it's, the ocean science is under-resourced, the governance is weak, the capacity is uh, unevenly distributed. So we need to build oceanography that is fit for highlighting problems, but also for starting to systematically provide solutions. And we need to mainstream this ocean science in all of those aspects. So it is time for change. And this is why in 2016, the, the nations that formed the IUC started to discuss a global initiative to try to really strengthen this uh, uh, support of science towards the achievement of sustainable development. And uh, at that time, uh, we decided to uh, engage uh, you know, all the IUC member states. And then we thought this is bigger than just the IUC. Uh, if you look at the SDG 14, the SDG 14 has many ramifications for other SDGs as well, whether it comes to economy, employment, climate, uh, fresh water, uh, and so on. So we need to go in a much bigger endeavor, and, and this is why uh, we decided to go for this uh, UN uh, decade. And the first task that we had was to come up with a, a vision uh, of a decade, and you can see here, here the vision statement, which is to develop scientific knowledge, to build infrastructure, and foster partnerships for a sustainable and healthy ocean. And of course, we went to the IOC governing bodies, then we went to the UN General Assembly. And in fact, it didn't take long for uh, getting the support that, that we were hoping for. Many countries realized the importance to have such an initiative to really help and back up the implementation of the Agenda 2030 and the SDGs. But what is also very important is when we decided and we thought about this decade, we felt that it cannot be business as usual. It's not just 
packaging things and making it nice and making you know uh, telling the nice story and how policy relevant is really to define a transformative nature of everything we are doing and there are different elements there it's really about radically changing our understanding on how the ocean contributes to sustainable development it's really about translating research outputs into issue driven solutions it's stimulating the integration of social and natural science which is not done enough uh, but also traditional knowledge we need to look at the traditional knowledge it's strengthening the uptake of science by policymakers and citizens it's promoting partnership uh, with the private sector we know the private sector is becoming a major actor in research and development and we need to, to, to work out some good models of collaboration we also know that new technologies are emerging and we are really on the curb curse of a, a new a new dawn and we need to to harness these new technologies to better understand observe and deliver information on the state of our ocean so it is also about uh, really enabling access uh, to open data and information to all people and all stakeholders and needed we need to also bring in the early career scientists so i'm very happy to see very many early career scientists and i hope you can all embrace this decade and use it uh, in your work but also we want to stimulate uh, gender mainstreaming we want to address the needs of small island developing states and these developing countries and finally this is also about bringing the different parts of the un together in this endeavor so we need principles to do that uh, it's not just a nice statement but it's important that this translates in the way uh, we are developing this uh, this, this decade and one of the uh, approach we have taken is that instead of starting with a number of scientific priority areas that i'm sure the scientific community will be very excited to, to promote and to define we need to look at what it is we are trying to achieve and and, and really look at the societal outcomes we want to, to get to in, 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 in 10 years from now. So we've decided to, to frame this really around this uh, a number of, uh, in fact, six, six societal outcomes, um, which are all related to the SDGs, to international commitments. Uh, so it's nothing really new there, but it's really how we're going to get there through scientific uh, research and better dissemination of, of, uh, of information and data. So we're looking at the clean ocean, and here we're thinking, what, how can we rebuild the science to really identify the sources of pollution, to quantify them, to reduce them, come up with new technologies? It's a healthy and resilient ocean, really trying to understand how marine ecosystems are providing uh, services to humanity. So to, to, to start that, we need to, to have a better map, better map of, of the seafloor, for example. This is a, we only have about six or seven percent which has been uh, mapped in high resolution. Uh, that's not sufficient to support uh, sustainable development, to, su to support management. So we also need to understand cumulative uh, um, uh, stresses and their impacts on the, on the marine environment. We need to build a predicted ocean where society has the capacity to understand current and future ocean conditions, to forecast their change and impact on, on human well-being and, and, and livelihoods. We want a safer ocean where human communities are protected from ocean hazards, and where operations at sea are conducted in a, in a safer environment with better information. We want a sustainable, productive ocean, uh, and it's really looking at the way uh, the ocean is providing food supply and, and what kind of sustainable livelihoods uh, can be secured from there. And finally, it's really about a, a, getting a transparent and accessible ocean, where by, by this we mean that where countries, where stakeholders, have better access to information where the ocean becomes something which is really visible not just this this blind uh, area on, on the map and that of course requires uh, technical skills capacity development education and engagement uh, with citizens so in order to get to those uh, societal outcomes we need to achieve a number of scientific breakthroughs and uh, those you know, include the mapping, the observations, and those will then somehow be delivered in a very applied manner so that they can support the efforts of countries in implementing coastal zone management strategies, marine spatial planning, blue economy, aquaculture and fishery management, adaptation to climate change, 
So those are very uh, concrete societal and uh, applications. And that's really the, the, the I think, the, the central philosophy of this decade. It's not just science for science, it's science for applications of sustainable development. And to do that, we need to work on those research and development priority areas. And this is really what we are starting to do now. Uh, I mentioned the map. Of course, we want the seafloor to be mapped, but more than the seafloor, we need to understand what kind of uh, ecosystems we have. We need to look at the, uh, the, the geology. Uh, we need to look at uh, how uh, the observation systems are being uh, operated. We know that currently, uh, with the uh, floating uh, the Argo program, we can measure up to 2,000 meter depth. But you know, most of the high seas are a much deeper depth. So, and we know uh, now have uh, human activities in those regions. So we need to develop ways to be able to monitor those areas. We need to conduct an inventory of ecosystems and their functioning. So I saw earlier mention of eDNA. That's very important. We have developed the ocean biogeographic information system, OBIS, which is now hosted by uh, IOC. But we need to to take OBIS to another level to, to, to be able to really uh, support uh, policy. We need to invest in uh, data and information sharing and dissemination. And of course, this is something uh, that, that requires infrastructure and capacity development. We need to establish integrated multi-hazards warning systems. We need to develop uh, earth system models, uh, which really also integrate the socioeconomic dimensions. And we need capacities to accelerate uh, technology transfer and, and ocean literacy. So those are some of the kind of core, you know, package areas that 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 this decade is going to to look at, and and of course uh, get the community to to to, to plan and strategize on on, on further uh, developing those, those areas. But I think the decade also provides a, a maybe a, a renewed cooperation framework for ocean science. It's really about mobilizing scientists on critical ocean priority areas relevant to the sustainable agenda. It's about bringing together uh, researchers to synthesize research and defining trends and knowledge gaps and priorities for future research. It's about developing co-design research strategies, for example, with social scientists, but also with the users. It's about fostering new joint research and cooperation uh, within and across ocean basins. So, you know, the ocean is an international uh, uh, forum in itself. It's about synthesizing, assessing results, and making sure that those are fed into uh, policy and societal level through various mechanisms. And of course, all of this requires stakeholder engagement from the start. You know, I have to engage stakeholders at the end only. It requires funding and partnership. So it's really looking at how we can align uh, investments in ocean science around the world. It requires integration between natural and social science, and it requires uh, capacity development. So this engagement phase is, is very important. So what we are doing now in the next year and a half uh, is, is, is actually critical. Um, we are, we've been tasked to deliver an implementation plan by 2020, uh, which is really inclusive, that in, really reflects the contribution of different stakeholders. And what are those stakeholders? Those are, of course, we need to start with the ocean science, and I would say the technology community, because this is you. And you are here to help us to formulate priorities, to advance and align the agendas for global ocean science, and to increase this, this uptake. It's, of course, the policymakers, the ones who are going to fund the research, who are going to invest, who are also going to highlight the needs uh, for uh, specific solutions and, and, and the sustainability challenges that governments uh, and, and local authorities are facing. It's also the business and industry. We want them to access uh, and to, to, to help us develop solutions. They are, as I said earlier, they are uh, investing a lot in, in, in research and development. Uh, they are holding a lot of data on the marine environment that also uh, could really help research. So it's, it's really about getting them involved in, in developing public-private uh, research models that can, that can really help. Civil society needs to be, of course, in the pictures because they give evidence base and they can prioritize advice and can be the voice of civil society. We want donors and foundations because we want them, of course, this, all of this would be resource-intensive and I guess what we are trying to do is really boost the investment 
So this requires alignment uh, as well as leverage of investment in order to have high impact in global ocean research. And of course, we need the public involved uh, because the public will will be a, a really important end user of this, hopefully leading to increased awareness and uh, triggering behavioral changes on the way to see the ocean. So to do this in the next couple of years, we have a process uh, in place. Uh, IOC, as I mentioned, is, is, is the lead for is coordinating this, uh, the preparation of this decade. We have established a, a, an executive planning group, which has a, about a group of uh, 20 eminent uh, scientists, but not just ocean scientists. We also have social scientists. We have lawyers. Uh, we have people with more focus on, on, on legal aspects. Um, we also have a, a, a series of regional and global meetings that we are planning in 2019 and 2020. And, and those are really multi-stakeholder by nature. So we won't really have a, a use those meetings as a dialogue across the, between the science community, between the private sector, the policymakers, uh, and civil society. And of course, this is at the global level, but at the national level, countries should really also take ownership of this decade. This is not just a UN decade, as I said earlier. It belongs to, to all of us. So I would really encourage you, you as a community, as a Flemish science community, to use this decade to start the dialogue with your governments, with the economic sectors, with civil society, to try to see what you want to get out of this by 2030. So this, we have several meetings coming up, and the idea, one of those first meetings will be actually in a couple of months from now in Copenhagen. This is the first global planning meeting. It will help us to really flesh out a little bit more those uh, research and development priority areas that I've mentioned, but also address a number of cross-cutting issues such as capacity development, financing, communication, data sharing. And then the idea is really to take the decade to the regions, to the global, to the ocean regions. So we are uh, forcing a series of about eight to nine workshops in all major ocean basins. Uh, the first one will start in the South Pacific region in, in July, and then we will have another one at the same month in, in the North Pacific, and so on. And so we are in the course of uh, defining those venues, uh, getting uh, host countries and organizations engaged who want to contribute. And, and there, basically, will these meetings will help us to really first communicate what we are trying to do, but understand what are the regional priorities in terms of research, in terms of capacity development, in terms of data information gaps, and trigger the development of transformative initiatives in the decade. And all of this will bring this back uh, at the beginning of 2020 through another global planning meeting, which will have a task to basically consolidate, synthesize all those regional inputs, and integrate them into the, 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 the planning process of decade, which will be brought back to the, to the UN towards the end of uh, 2020. But of course, as we are moving forward, we need to look at the partnership elements, the financing elements, and this is something that we are working very hard on. I'll skip that one. So this is just the timeline that uh, we have in, in, in front of us. It's uh, very intensive. Um, we have a, a number of uh, meetings being taken place, uh, and we, we hope that by 2021, uh, we will be ready with uh, the start of this decade. Um, and we already are hosting a, a big major event um, uh, somewhere in Europe. I can't say too much about this, uh, but, but this is, will be uh, the kickoff, the official kickoff of, of the decade. And of course, what is important is that we engage a number of regional and global players when it comes to the ocean, and we are very much doing this, uh, working with regional partners, uh, with other UN bodies, in order to, to, to help and to, to build this partnership element, which is so important. So, in, in conclusion, uh, I think meeting the societal demands, demands and achieving the SDG 14 can really only be realized if all the elements of the ocean value chain are resourced and adequately, uh, and, and, and the, the most, the, the, the science agenda are advanced. And of course, to do this, we need global capacity development and resource sharing between nations. We also need to deliver data and information for integrated research, uh, which can support policy action, which can support public and private sectors. And we need to build on new technology, which needs to be shared, uh, and we need to harness the digital revolution to deliver 
the information where it's most needed. And to do that, we need the help of everybody. So we need your help. So please take ownership of this decade and, and use it. And so in conclusion, I just want to again thank you. I just want to highlight some of our partners uh, who are uh, you know, contributing, providing in-kind support, uh, but as well as financial support. Government of Norway, the Japanese government, the Korean government, the Flemish government, which was one of the first uh, um, to, to actually provide some, some support to, to IOC. The Pacific Community, the European Commission also, we are working very closely to try to align our agendas and, and, and really to find convergence uh, with, uh, with DG Research and DG Marine Telecom. So with this, uh, I want to thank you very much. And again, this is your decade, so make the best of it. Thank you.